Thank you, Claudia, and good evening, everybody. Um, thanks for being here tonight with Ford. What I'd like to share with you is a few of the consumer electronic trends that we believe are interesting and may have an impact on the automotive industry. So here goes. Here we show the recent growth of smartphones. By 2016, 97% of smartphones will have a high-resolution touchscreen display. It's very interesting to think about these device screens replacing those in our vehicles. Here's a table showing global navigation systems and device market. By 2016, smartphones are expected to outsell personal navigation devices by 4 to 1 and automotive embedded navigation systems by 10 to 1. Really, all of the substantial growth over the next few years in navigation products are going to be in smartphone navigation. We like to look at the intersection of cars and mobile. There were 1 billion smartphones sold in 2013 and only 83 million global vehicle sales. Most people would look at that and conclude there's a lot more phones in the world than there are vehicles. However, vehicles tend to last a lot longer than smartphones. And surprisingly, there's over 1 billion vehicles currently in operation in the world. And that number is growing quickly in fast-growing markets like Brazil. And not only are smartphone sales climbing, but there's a 90% increase in cloud-based data storage in 2013. Looking again at the intersection of car and mobile, let's look at the differences in product development cycles between the auto industry and the cell phone industry. On average, the vehicle development cycle is three to five years. In smartphones, it's six to 12 months. And now let's look at some of the processing technology differences. For an average vehicle, you can see the technology in terms of CPU, storage, and RAM, and the median device technology is many fold larger than that for all of those categories. And the real challenge is trying to bring these two worlds together. Another fun fact, 75% of smartphone users believe it's important to connect devices to the car. And they are twice as likely to use a phone's touch screen while driving in the car when the in-car technology doesn't meet their needs. 60% of device users in India use their phone as their primary internet access, and about one half of the world will have access to mobile broadband by 2015. Let's talk a little bit about Ford's recent connectivity products. We introduced a product called Sync in 2007 on the Focus. It was the first infotainment offering with voice control over a customer's cell phone, MP3 player, and text message reader. At Ford, we like to say, before there was Siri, there was Sync. Think about that. Sync was introduced and introduced the voice assistant a full four years before Siri was on the market. Here are some other examples. In 2008, we introduced Crew Chief, which is a factory sold and installed embedded. It provides exclusive four data offboard, such as MPG, which is miles per gallon, tire pressure, oil life, seat belt status, diagnostic trouble codes, and other data. We also performed an over-the-air update for the modem in 2008. The customer benefits of this system include safer fleet operation, improved fleet maintenance, and asset optimization. And Sync was designed as a platform upon which software apps can be quickly developed and launched. Emergency assist, vehicle health report, and sync services were all launched in 2009. Emergency assist leverages the cell phone you bring into the vehicle with you, and it calls your local emergency service provider without any operator. The service is free for the life of the vehicle with no monthly service fees. VHR, Vehicle Health Report, provides customers with a vehicle health report available on a website, through email, and through text messages for critical conditions, and no monthly service charge. And Sync Services itself is a cloud-based, turn-by-turn navigation services that leverages a cloud-based engine, a cloud-based voice engine. That was an industry first for Ford, cloud-based POIs, and cloud-based traffic. AppLink is our smartphone technology that was first launched on Fiesta, which is our lowest price vehicle sold in the U.S. This demonstrates that Ford is pursuing the democratization of technology 
which ensures our technology is both affordable and available across our entire vehicle lineup. We'll talk more about AppLink later. In 2013, we introduced MyFord Mobile, which is our smartphone and modem-based technology for electric vehicles. It includes a number of exclusive features and industry firsts, such as an integrated charge station locator, value charging, which provides optimized charging within the lowest cost utility price windows, and gamification, which awards individual drivers with achievements based on their driving behavior as compared to other electric vehicle owners, as well as regional rankings. Now let's talk about AppLink, our award-winning smartphone technology. It extends the smartphone app user interface into the vehicle so drivers can keep their hands on their wheel and the eyes on the road. Remember the earlier slide showing the number of vehicle owners that are likely to use their smartphones while driving? Well, AppLink fixes that problem. It does this by giving developers access to the Sync's in-vehicle voice engine, the steering wheel and radio controls, the vehicle speakers and microphone. Developers integrate AppLink APIs provided by Ford into their smartphone app. This means developers get to work in their own language and on the OS's operating systems they're used to. The smartphone application is not integrated into the vehicle infotainment system, which enables fast deployment into the market. Remember those gears on the earlier slide? AppLink is how Ford enables the two industries with different clock speeds to work together. Ford has partnered with individual app developers like yourselves, as well as giants in the industry in AppLink hackathons with companies like Facebook, Baidu, and others. Through these hacks, we have demonstrated that working code can be developed literally overnight in 12 hours. That's how developer-friendly AppLink is. Sync AppLink is the most popular automotive development environment in the world. And you'll see this on the next slide. Not only has Ford partnered with some of the biggest app names in the industry, but all of the giants choose to launch with Ford first before launching with any other automaker. That list of Rhapsody, Pandora, USA Today, Stitcher, The Wall Street Journal, Glimpse, Major League Baseball, and Spotify, to name just a few. Ford offers more smartphone-enabled applications than any other maker in the world. There are more than 60 apps that can be accessed in Ford vehicles, more than double the number of any other competitor. Many of these are available in multiple countries and support many different languages. Many people are familiar with music services such as Pandora and Spotify, but AppLink also brings favorites from additional categories, such as news and information, apps such as Stitcher, and one of the first products to incorporate voice pass-through NPR radio. Another category is productivity, with Baidu Voice Assistant and Sogu Voice Assistant. Sports, leaders such as Major League Baseball with MLB.com at bat, and also ESPN Circa Info. Travel and navigation apps, like Ford's own Sync Destinations. Health and wellness for drivers with apps such as Allergy Alert. And audiobooks are very popular with drivers, so AppLink offers apps like Audioteca from Germany. The Internet of Everything means collecting all different parts of our lives. Ford is leading the way here, too. At CES just a few weeks ago, we were proud to offer ADT, the largest home security system in North America, as the first connected home application to the world that they controlled using AppLink's voice commands. This app can enable security, security systems, lock and unlock your doors, turn lights on and off, set home temperature, and alert you if your security system has been triggered, all by keeping your hands on the wheel and your eyes on the road. With only a few simple busy families on the go, will be able to order their saved favorite dinner orders from Domino's Pizza and pay automatically right from their account. Originally launched in the United States in the 2011 Fiesta, AppLink has become a market leader with nearly 2 million vehicles on the road. Ford announced just a few weeks ago at CES that we will make AppLink available for an additional 3.4 million owners as a download to vehicles. 
going all the way back to 2010 models. In 2014, we were excited to dramatically increase the footprint of AppLink as we roll it out across the globe, including in 2004, launch in Europe, China and Asia, Pacific, Australia, and India. And of course, we are pleased to be at the campus party to announce the planned mid-year introduction of AppLink here in Brazil and across the South American continent. By 2015, we are projecting 14 million sync vehicles worldwide. Many of these will offer AppLink connectivity to their owners. Now let's talk about a little bit of history. Ford is all about innovation. And the Ford Motor Company was built on a culture of innovation and ingenuity. This innovation is the result of the dedicated work and commitment of the men and women in our engineering centers and manufacturing facilities all over the globe. Much of this innovation has come from inside a Ford Motor Company and not from research or outside companies. In fact, one of Henry Ford's famous quotes that I personally like quite a bit is, if I asked my customers what they had wanted, they would have said a faster horse. We take great pride in continuing that tradition, not only in our vehicles, but more importantly, at events like camp the campus party and the technology we offer. In Brazil, it is not any different. Ford was the first automaker in Brazil in 1919, 95 years ago. We were the first automaker to set up a plant in northeastern Brazil in Camasari in 2001. We were the first to have a product development center in the northeast region with 1,550 engineers and designers from Brazil, Argentina, and Venezuela. We were the first to develop the first global product, the new EcoSport, right here in Brazil. In 2014, the Commissari plant will begin operations for the first engine plant of the northeastern region. And by 2015, every car and truck sold in Brazil will be based off a global platform. Today, I'm really excited about announcing the AppLink, the launch of AppLink in Brazil here at the campus party, because just as Henry Ford looked to his friends to help bring his vision to life, we are doing the same to foster collaboration and innovation in ways never before seen in the automotive industry. We helped bring Henry Ford's vision of opening the highways to all mankind when we launched the Ford Developer Program at the 2013 International Consumer Electronics Show. So, Ford continues to open the highways. The Ford Developer Program was the automotive industry's first open ecosystem, inviting mobile developers from all over the world to participate in the largest online camping trip. The Ford Developer Program allows us to engage our customers with the opportunity to innovate with us to help deliver thoughtful, meaningful solutions that will enhance the driving experience. I'd like to introduce Scott Burnell, who will tell us some more exciting things about the program. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Doug. Do we get this on? Are we on? Are we on? Are we on? Are we on? There we go. Thanks, Doug. Now that I have a voice, I'll be more than happy to explain it. How are we doing this evening, everybody? Good? Tired? Have we been coding? Anybody been coding? Come on. Yeah, I know those guys have been coding. They're going crazy over there. We get asked a lot, why is Ford at a developer conference? Actually, we've been asked that quite a bit this week. Ford is a technology company. Ford is an automotive technology company. Ford is a technology company. We embrace development by the outside development world. As Doug said, we launched AppLink in 2011. We have 66 apps right now. We're launching globally this year here in Brazil, as he just announced, which is very exciting for us. And applications are the reason that Ford is a technology company while we're here at the conference. There are four countries that are developing quicker than any place else in the world when it comes to mobile applications. China, India, Russia, and a place that I find absolutely beautiful now that I've been here, Brazil. These four countries are going to be leading the way in app development and app consumption 
over the next five to eight years. That means that as Ford launches AppLink here in Brazil, we are hitting it right at the prime time for owners, which means that it's right at the prime time for developers to get into the vehicle and get their apps in front of these owners so they're using apps in a more appropriate way. Through the end of 2013, just a month ago, there were a total of 110 billion apps downloaded in the major app stores globally. Now when you think about the fact that Apple launched the iTunes store in 2008, a year after launching the actual iPhone in 2007. So from 2008 to 2013, between iPhone and Android, there's been 110 billion downloads. Apple themselves, 60 billion downloads in the App Store in that time. Google, in a shorter amount of time, in the Android Play Store, has had 50 billion downloads. That's with a B. By the end of this year, when we hit 2015, that number is going to rise to 180 billion app downloads. So if you take five years of the iPhone being in existence and offering third-party apps, and you take four years, three years of the Google Play Store, we are going to hit the same amount of apps that Apple did in those five years just in this year alone. An interesting stat is that most iPhone users around the world have an average of 67 apps downloaded to their phone. If you're an iPhone user right now, I want you to think about how many trays of apps you've got on your iPhone. If you're a Google user, how many different screens of apps do you have? The other end of that equation is that a user only use, actually accesses about seven of those apps on a daily or weekly basis. The app turnover rate in the top 50 apps in Google Play is 20% per month. Every month, 20% of those top 50 fall out and a new 20% comes in to replace them. That's why there's one billion apps available in the App Store now for iTunes, and nearly a billion in Google Play. That's why Ford is a technology company. That's why Ford embraces developers. The best way for us to embrace developers is to create a program for developers. At the 2013 CES show in Las Vegas, Nevada, we announced the developer program. The developer program, the Ford developer program as a matter of fact, is a way for developers to get access to the resources, the tools, and the people that AppLink has been using over the past three years in order to make apps such as Napster, Glimpse, and TuneIn, which are going to be launching here in Brazil in 2014, available for our owners. The Ford Developer Program offers a number of different things to our developer community. There's resources. There's a community aspect. We offer live blogs. We offer live chats with the Ford Developer team. We have a system of forums where you can get information from your peers and from the Ford Developer team directly. We've got opportunities, which we're going to talk about. Doug mentioned we've done hackathons. It looks like the world's biggest hackathon right behind us over here. There's geeks, there's nerds. Be proud of that. That means that you're cool nowadays. And everybody here has the same time when you come into the Ford Developer Program. Developer.ford.com. That's what you need to remember. Developer.ford.com. Once you enter the community, you're going to have the same access as Pandora, as Major League Baseball, as iHeartRadio, as Baidu. 
you're going to have access to the full SDKs available for iOS and for Android. You'll get the entire proxy availability. You'll get the guidelines for developing. You're going to get best practices. You're going to get white papers that will show you how you can actually integrate into your mobile app. If you've stopped by the Ford booth out in the main hall, you may have seen what looks like a really cool looking vehicle. So that They don't have to since sliced bread. Did that translate well? We're going to actually take them and deliver them to the app store of their choice, appropriate for their OS. So Google, the Google Play Store, the Apple iTunes App Store. So that way, they don't have to learn a new way to download. Ford's not going to insert ourselves into the business relationship between you and your app users. So if you sell an app for 99 cents, if you make it free, if you make it $50, if you make it 100 reals, doesn't matter. What they're going to do is go to their store where they normally download, where they already have a payment set up with a credit card or whatever they may be using. And in the same way they would normally download, they're going to download your normal app. It's not a different app that says Ford in front of it. It's your app, your customer, and they d download it to their device. And when they get in the vehicle, it just works. what that says. It just works. Doug mentioned hackathons. One of the great things about being a developer that works with Ford and joins the Ford developer community is that we're proactive. Henry Ford went to his friends. He said, help me. 
I'm smart, but I'm not that smart. The group of us are always going to be smarter than the individual. We invite people to innovate with us. We want developers in the community to come up with ideas that we may not have thought of. We're a small team. We work hard. You're a lot of developers. You work hard. Putting those resources together, we can come up with some very, very cool, appropriate in-vehicle apps. Hackathons with companies like Facebook, very large. Baidu, if you're familiar with Baidu, they are one of the largest companies in the world based in China. Baidu has more customers than the United States has people. That's big. But we also like to come to smaller events. Campus Party is a large event. When we hold a hackathon, we want to be able to have very good deliveries. We want to have people have a little good time, a lot of Red Bull, a lot of pizza, very little sleep, and then turn out something really cool at the end. We've given away the TDKs that you saw just a little while ago as prizes. We've brought developers as small as a two-person team who've won a hackathon. We brought them to CES and brought them up on stage, standing right next to me, which meant they looked really good because I make anybody look good if they're standing next to me. Some of them actually get into the vehicle. Roximity was a small three-person company who won a hackathon in 2011. We launched them as an AppLink enabled app in 2012. And in 2013, they were a 25-man operation who had been funded by a venture capitalist. So we like to be able to provide those kinds of opportunities. That's the, that's the return. When people say, well, why would you make AppLink available to developers? We want to return to our owners that innovation that you guys can bring. As we launch AppLink here in Brazil and across South America, there's a number of new features that are going to be available. There'll be new features for all owners here, but they're features that we're excited to launch. We're going to have capabilities such as voice pass-through. That means that not only can you load a command into the vehicle, into the text engine, but you can also take that voice as the, owners, as the driver speaks it and put it into your application and use your own solution. That makes voice recognition and natural speech very, very easy and much better experience for the owner, much simpler. They don't have to remember specific vehicle commands. Background alerts. When you're listening to your favorite music in Napster, when it launches here in 2014 in Brazil, you can still get alerts from other AppLink apps. So if you've got a weather app, and there's inclement weather coming, there's going to be a tornado, there's going to be a thunderstorm. When that app sends that alert, now it can interrupt the radio, if you're listening to the radio, it can interrupt another AppLink application, and it can let you know that there's dangerous weather coming. You'll be able to hear it spoken audibly, and you'll get a brief message on the screen. Maybe you're going to be watching the World Cup? Is everybody going to the World Cup? Is everybody in Brazil going to the World Cup? No? There's one. So if you don't have a ticket, and you happen to be driving, and for some reason you're listening to something other than the game, when your team scores and you get that alert, you can have it yell, go right through the speakers for you, and you'll get it. We're also going to be able to launch apps by just saying the name of the app from any menu in the vehicle. So you won't have to do a deep dive. You won't have to say, show me applications, show me what works. You just say glimpse, and it's going to automatically start for you. So these are the things that you're going to have. These are the tools that we're going to be bringing to Brazil, to the rest of South America, all across the world. One thing to remember is that you're not just developing for your own country or your own continent. People can use apps anywhere that AppLink is available. So we want you to think big. We want you to do cool stuff that you enjoy and that your friends will enjoy, but we also want you to take this opportunity to say, hey, 
what kind of things can I do that'll affect the entire world? Again, we thank you very much for your attention. Ford is very, very happy to be here. And we expect to see all of you over by the Ford booth taking a look at the things that we have to offer, the new vehicles, and of course, the TDKs and the developer program. Thank you very much. A gente vai fazer uma sessão aqui de perguntas e respostas para quem tiver alguma dúvida. Acho que ele falou de um tema que todo mundo se interessou, né? Uh, quem tem alguma pergunta? Hey, hi. Uh, I have a question on the connectivity of the the app link. As we can see. It's basically on media, regarding media and voice control of the car. Um, my question is, is in the plans of Ford to the future bring this information for us developers that we could use information from the car, such as speed, uh, you, you know what I'm asking, right? So the question was, if you didn't hear it, are we going to have uh, data from the car in addition to kind of music apps and things like that? So uh, the latest version of AppLink, which is currently launching in Europe, has what we call vehicle data. So there will be uh, all kinds of data that's available on our network, vehicle speed. We have a GPS engine, fuel, seatbelt warnings, there's a seatbelt buckled. Uh, there's all kinds of that, that information, Scott, is available in terms of the data and the APIs that you can get off the vehicle. So go again to developer.for.com and you'll see it, but that is the version of AppLink that will be launching here in South America. Did you want to add anything? No. Hi. I don't speak English very well, but uh, I will try. I and some friends when in university we work with autonomous cars uh, and we hacking and reversing engineering the CAN bus to get information. Uh, we love code for iOS and Android. Uh, we would love to see uh, one hackathon in Brazil to build apps and tests. Uh. That is a very handsome question. We have actually just, we've, just today we were talking about hackathons in Brazil, and after being here at Campus Party, we believe that there's a great, great opportunity here. Uh, the developer community is already very big, obviously. I mean, look at all of you, and look at the tents. I mean, come on. Uh, yeah, so we, we don't have one planned for next week yet, but very soon, I would love to be able to announce something in the near future, in the not too far future, to take advantage of the excitement that we have here and definitely have a, a hackathon at some point in the future here in Brazil. So here's a question. If we had a hackathon here next year, how many people would show up? All right, that's a good number. We might do it. We very well probably will. Well, well we're getting close. Alguém tem mais alguma pergunta? Tá. Ah, uh, hi. Uh, how can we get a uh, hackathon to our town? How can we take a hackathon to our town? Cre no. I'm from Paraná, Maringá. Paraná is another state here in Brazil, so he wants a reggaeton there. How many other uh, developers do you know? How many, how many friends can you bring? Him? <laughs> That's two? So I'll give you a definite maybe then. There we have a, a startups community 
So we, it's very inter interesting to us. Uh, next year, uh, this year, we are going to organize an event to about seven, uh, 700 of people. All, all, uh, most of our developers. The last year we had a hackathon from Nokia there uh, to Windows Phone, uh, Windows Mobile, and in, it's very interesting to us we uh, take a, a hackathon to our city. That's actually a very good idea then. As I said, this is my first time to Brazil, so I'm definitely working on it, and we'll find out what we can do. Find me afterwards. E pessoal, tem possibilidade de fazer pergunta em português também, porque eles estão com o tradutor lá, tá? Hi. Uh, every car model here in Brazil is going to have a version with AppLink or just the more expensive models? Do you have that information? So it's definitely not just the expensive models. We have not laid out the exact vehicle plan, but the plan in the United States, as I said earlier, will be launched on our least expensive car and it will definitely be available over time on every model. Um, but we're going to be unlike all the other car makers and we're definitively going to have this on our low-end vehicles and soon. Just to complete the question, uh, on the low-end vehicles, uh, would change the, the version of the app link? I mean, low-end vehicles with uh, small, smaller screens or uh, does it that change anything on the version of the AppLink? Yeah, so AppLink is just available on sync-enabled vehicles at this point because it leverages the voice engine. So um, there's a lower-end uh, radio in our vehicles that we're working on getting AppLink on, but we're not announcing that. A AppLink goes with sync, and it'll be available across our entire lineup eventually. Yeah, but. To that, to that point, once AppLink is AppLink, so we wouldn't do special things for the more expensive vehicles and, and take stuff out for the, for the lower end vehicles, the, the AppLink uh, template works regardless of what vehicle it's in and delivers the appropriate content based on what the vehicle can do. Mais alguma pergunta? I have a question. Where can I get a hat like that? Ele tá perguntando onde ele pode like achar that? um chapéu igual o seu. Downtown? I'm going downtown. É, uh, liberdade. Liberty. Liberdade by neighbor neighborhood <laughs> Japanese town. Obrigado. Can can Scott and I get a picture with you? Come on up. Can we get a picture? He said if we make a hackathon here next year, he'll bring one to you. Okay, we have we have to have two people that agree to the hack. Claudia, thank you. There's two people that have to agree to a hack for next year. Yeah, I know. You I don't care about and Scott and I. Okay. Think about it. I will. Think about it. Sure. Alguém tem mais alguma pergunta? Não? Então, pessoal, muito obrigada pela presença de vocês. Agradeço ao Doug e ao Scott.